to get one more place at this yeah. we'll have that done this afternoon that way shopping for the month is done we sitting there talking I was telling her you know, I, it occurred to me you know, I, I got the mail the other day and one of the things in the mail is a little thing from a Baptist church had questions on you know, who is God, who is what is heaven, this, that, this thing, and all that kind Basically, a, a pamphlet flyer, pretty good size, too. And, uh, yeah, it's basically trying to get people to come to their church. Now, this church is probably a good 20, 30 miles away from where we are. I'm not sure. I remember looking at the address, seeing what it was at. I knew it was, it was a good trip from the house, I'll say that. And I thought to myself, you know, the money they spend on producing and sending out those pamphlets, it's like a little book. So you know it costs a lot of money. Even at a discounted rate, that costs a lot of money. Why ain't they using that money to better help the folks in their immediate area? Yeah, I mean, I'm sure they may have other programs where they're helping the poor and needy and this and anything and all like that. But you know what? The money they're spending on them pamphlets could be going towards helping even more. You know, one might argue, well, you know, they send out those, they get more people to come to their church. Well, yeah. But if they got members going to their church, got enough money to make it where they can afford to do that kind of advertising. You know, how are they going to look at the folks they trying to get to come in there? Good. I don't know, it just, maybe I'm wrong, but I usually ain't. That money could be going to better help the folks in their area. And word of mouth would get out more than them pamphlets would. The only thing them pamphlets are going to do by most folks is get thrown in the trash. Aisle 13. Yeah. Because a lot of people have gotten to see it the way I look see it just another advertisement from another company of some sort they just want more people to come there put their money there they have even more money to make more pounds to send out more papers <laughs> that money could be going to help more folks than what they're already helping you know like a lot Elaine and I was saying, you know, they they got members where they got money coming in that good. You know, they're gonna they gonna have some well to do to rich members there. How are those members gonna look at the people that come searching for what it talks about in the pamphlet <laughs> and they find anything but people looking down their noses at them. I've been there, some, done that, seen that. You know, I've been to lots of churches that, you know, you're sitting there, you got the Holy Ghost, everything, and you walk in there, well, since you weren't saved, is there a church? Well, you ain't saved. Oh, we got to get you at the altar. You know, and the Holy Ghost is revealing all sorts of stuff to you about them. <laughs> 
and like uh, what hold up so this this is the only church I get saved at right uh huh people you can be out in the middle of the desert nobody around you and you can cry out to God in Jesus name guess what he'll be there I know people been out in the middle of a field and by themselves and that's where it's happened same difference yeah and uh you know because here's the thing you don't need a priest to confess to you don't need a preacher to confess to Jesus became our intercessor that's why I said because Jesus is the only name given under heaven by which there is any power given so you cry out to God in Jesus' name well you're talking directly to the source buddy no pastors no preachers no priests or anyone else necessary because Jesus became the, the intercessor when he died and the veil was split God opened it up for us to be able to pray to God in Jesus name now you got somebody telling you, oh, you ain't saved. You know, you got it. Yeah. You come here, you come here to be saved. They don't even know you yet. You know? And that's the wrong way to do. And, you know, somebody said, well, it says to confess your sin. Yeah, to God. In Jesus' name, not to another man or another woman, but to God Himself. And somebody tells you that you have to go to Pastor so and so or Priest so and so to confess your sins in order to be saved and, and, and all that. Guess what? That's a false teaching, that's a false doctrine, that's a false prophet. You tell them get away from you because they ain't telling the truth they don't know the truth the word says Jesus is the intercessor we call out to God in Jesus' name and confess to him with our mouths our sins not to some other human being yeah so boy that got me off on a rant but I'm going to tell you yeah, they, they go somewhere where they ain't trying to grab you by the arm and drag you up to the altar or, or trying to browbeat you or anything like that. You go somewhere where they'll notice you, say hi to you, this, that, the other thing, and all like that. And doing it like the Bible says, leaving it between you and God. And that's where it's at. So. Uh, where we at? Eight. Well, folks, she's a little wore out from grocery shopping. She's more than a little wore out. And uh, we still got to get home and unload everything. So it's hard for her to hold that thing up a lot of the time. So I think you're going to cut it short and just leave it at all that. Y'all just keep that in mind. Piggy loves you. Goodbye.